Hello, my name is Laura Moore and I run a company called Clutter Clarity in Metro West Boston. I'm so glad you're here today because I'm going to invite you into part of my life which merges the stories of many different people. I help people declutter and organize, downsize and move, any or all of the above. But what really distinguishes my business is that I teach people how to enjoy the process while we're doing the physical work. The whole idea, the belief system in which we enter the experience is that downsizing and moving, decluttering and organizing does not need to be hard. In fact, it can be an enjoyable experience. And when I'm working with people, I make sure from beginning to end, my interest is in your well-being or my client's emotional well-being from beginning to end, I want to make sure that they're enjoying the process, not just the results. The great thing about this is when you're enjoying yourself, it's so much easier to make good decisions and it's so much easier to show up and do the physical work that's necessary. Whether I'm there doing it with you or um, doing it for you, the whole idea is that it can take months. You might as well enjoy yourself. So today, the pleasure of today is that it's a culmination of three, real, three stories. About four years ago, I was invited into this lovely woman's house. Her name is Alice, and she asked me to help her declutter and organizing, organize her clothes. And she had five closets of four decades of clothes. And if you looked at the whole thing, it would be overwhelming. But what, with Alice at my side, we broke it down into little bits through time so that she could just be present to whatever needed to be done next. And we went by closet by closet and organized by category. The important thing here for today's story is that at one point we became a part of her history, her memories. We pulled out, I think there was seven or eight of those sexy little shifts that certainly mother, mothers of my parents generation wore you know with the big flowers in the late 60s and early 70s well Alice had seven or eight of them and they were stunning and bright and colorful and playful like her so what was once the other clothes a lot of the other clothes was clutter and 26 bags went to um, big brothers and big sisters but these dresses were different and they became a collection they're a collection they needed to be treated as special and then we talk through the whole process. See, this work is easy when you give yourself time to think it through. And she and I, through my experience and my wisdom and her personality, we came up with a decision that's perfect for her about what to do with these fabulous dresses. And in that process, naturally, what we did was start asking the question, or I started asking the question, Alice, so where do you want to live in the next 20 years? She assumed she was going to live to 100, 120, who knows, right? She's healthy and happy. We interviewed three continued care communities and she picked one that she was absolutely happy with. So yes, she's sad about letting go of the house that she's lived in over a half a century. But she's also ready and willing to go to a senior community of her own choosing. So in two weeks, we're moving her to the senior community. So that's the second story. And the third story is right over here, we're going to enter the fabulous art studio of Meryl Camo, which is right over here. And that's the third piece, which links the memories of Alice's dresses and the experience that the clothes hold and the memories hold and her future. And we'll see, what I did was create a bridge through the creation of art to take her memories into her future. So let's go see what Meryl's up to. This is so much fun. Remember, the whole purpose is not just to get this work done and over with. This is your stuff. This is what's important to you. It represents your whole life story. So when you're enjoying yourself, the process, not just the results, it's a beautiful experience. So let's go see what beauty that Meryl's creating out of those dresses. Come on now. now. Hi. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Of course. Oh, in your beautiful studio, oh so organized too. And look what you've created. Yeah, so it's, you know, these are some of Alice's dresses. Uh huh. I know, I recognize them, I love them whole. <laughs> yeah. So to me, these dresses really embody Alice. Yeah. And it took me actually a couple of years to cut into them. 
I know, that must have been hard. <laughs> but what I do is collect textiles uh -huh. that have had some kind of previous life. And they carry the memory of the person who lived that life. Uh -huh. And I thought about Alice a lot. Yeah. And so I thought about um, how to create a garden of tomorrow, in which Alice would be living on mm -hmm. by having her dresses in those, mm -hmm. in those pieces. And I've seen beautiful. Look at the difference. I know. Maybe you can see people the decades. recognize some of yeah. these patterns. Yeah. So these are the sexy little shifts that Alice wore when in the mm -hmm. late '60s and early '70s that I remember seeing my mother in. Mm -hmm. Though I don't think my mother was quite as partyish. <laughs> Alice knew how to have a good time. Alice had a vibrant life. How did you know that? Other than the colors, what else did you learn about Alice when you started cutting into the pic? Into well, the it's the kind of the fun thing about about cutting into Alice's dresses is that they're all beautifully pristine on the outside <laughs> and well cared for, yeah. but they frequently have linings in them. Yeah, and I could see from the lining. Yeah, that she may have spilled a drink or food at a party. <laughs> and as I was, party. yeah, so as looking at her linings and taking apart, her life really, like meals shared and parties, you know, attended or whatever. And really those beautiful forward. people. I mean, not beautiful, right. but she really was alive and is vibrant. alive and loved. Yes. And, um, and social. Loving. And yeah. social. So this is a this is a piece that was made at the Ware Farm Art Center, which is an artist residency. Where? In Connecticut. Uh huh. It's a national park, and um, it's a beautiful landscape, a natural landscape, a New England landscape. Right. And Alice is a New Englander living here, and so you can see the bodice of Alice. She had a beautiful 1950s dress with a cinched waist, oh. and the sort of uh, I think you might call that a dolman sleeve. So her, this yeah. is her, the neckline yeah. and the sleeve and the neckline and the sleeve. Oh, I you see, see it now. Re, mm -hmm. Reconfigured into this piece. Uh huh. So one of the things that's interesting to me is that when we started this, um, when I linked Meryl to Alice, I knew that Meryl was perfect because, you know, what you do with your stuff depends on who you are. There's no like absolute answers to this. And why Meryl was perfect is a few things. One is Alice loves the arts. Second of all, she loves flowers and she loves gardens and she loves nature. And a lot of Al uh, Meryl's work is all about nature. And so it was a perfect fit. And so the great thing about Alice was that she said yes without resistance. And that's when downsizing and moving becomes an enjoyable experience as opposed to one that you have to suffer through. Right, instead of it being a, a hard parting, right. Or right. an unhappy parting, it becomes a joyous gift. And all of this work has to do with loving the choices that you make and willing to move on in a way that actually feels good. Mm -hmm. You don't want to just get rid of something, you want to choose to let it go. And so here we are, the dresses, right. but this is my gift to Alice for all the work that we've done, but to show, you know, to bring you and to bring nature, because she's not going to have an acre of land around her anymore, mm -hmm. but she's going to have beauty, and this will be the bridge between her past and mm -hmm. all the fun that she had in her dresses mm -hmm. and the fun that she's going to have in the future community that she's moving in. The beauty of this work has to do with how to do what needs to be done with relative ease and pleasure, and if you're enjoying yourself, every, all the physical work gets easier. If you'd like a half hour free phone coaching session with me, we can discuss your unique circumstances and how to make your decluttering, organizing, downsizing, and move more enjoyable. Please visit my website, clutterclarity.com, or call Clutter Clarity at 978 704 1897. I look forward to hearing from you, and just remember it doesn't need to be so hard. Promise. Thanks very much for watching.